Let's talk about the basic anatomy of your camera and some basic settings that you're going to want to know about and change. If we look at a DSLR, a digital single lens reflex camera, um, sort of exploded so we can see inside, what you see here is the pathway of light that goes through different pieces of glass inside the lens and eventually passes through an aperture. An aperture is a variable size opening which can control the volume of light entering the camera much the way the pupil of your eye does. Now after the aperture, that light continues back uh, to a mirror which reflects that light up into a viewfinder. There's a focusing screen about right here and then a thing called the pentaprism which flips that image around so that we see it uh, right side up and left right correct. Now the issue is though that the mirror is blocking the light that eventually wants to get to the sensor. So when we take the photograph that mirror flips up and out of the way that light continues back to the shutter and then the shutter opens and closes to allow the light to strike the sensor for a certain amount of time. So the aperture is a control of volume of light and the shutter is a control of time that the light is striking the sensor. And that sensor has a sensitivity to it that's controlled by the ISO, what we call the ISO. If we look at the anatomy of a basic camera, this is a, a typical kind of entry level um, Nikon, I'm sorry, Canon camera. And what we're looking at here at the top of this Canon camera, we see that there is a control wheel. Now your entry level cameras have usually a single control wheel. Your pro level cameras often have two control wheels. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is a single control wheel camera. It also has an exposure mode wheel. This is the wheel that we will turn to switch our exposure mode from M, which is for manual, AV is aperture priority, TV is shutter priority, P is program. We're going to mostly work in manual. So that's our exposure control wheel. Obviously there's a power switch as well. And in this case, there's also a button that we can directly access our ISO. But the main things we want to know about right here, control wheel and exposure mode wheel. If we look at the top of a more entry level Nikon camera, um, what we see here is also an exposure mode wheel with the same modes M for manual, A for aperture, S for shutter, P for program. So these are our exposure modes. The control wheel on a typical Nikon camera, when you have a single control wheel Nikon camera, that control wheel is at the back of the camera about where your right thumb would come to rest. Now what is this control wheel I keep talking about? It's a wheel, it's kind of a clicky wheel that will allow you to adjust your shutter speed and depending on the situation, also your aperture. If we look at the back of a more entry-level Canon camera, we see a few things. Um, there is, on most cameras, what I refer to as a joystick, something that allows us to go up, down, side to side to navigate through different menus, uh, different options on our screen at the back. This might also allow us to control an autofocus point. There is, on the back of the Canon camera, an aperture control button. This is a button that you would later hold down to switch from controlling your shutter to controlling your aperture when you dial your control wheel. We'll get to more of that later. There's also up here, just to the upper right of the viewfinder, a little tiny dial called the diopter. This allows you to focus the viewfinder so that it is sharp for your vision, kind of like prescription glasses. If we look at the back of a more advanced Canon camera, this would be like a uh, 5D Mark II or III, something like that, more pro-level camera, we see a few more things. On the back of this camera, there is a second control wheel. In addition to the front control wheel that we typically find on an entry-level Canon, we also have a back control wheel. Why? Well, the front one will control one control, aperture, the back one will control the other control, shutter speed, perhaps. Um, and then we also have the joystick here. It's much smaller. It's up a little bit above. The, the set button is still in the middle of now what is the control wheel. Also on the back of uh, most pro-level uh, Canon cameras is a button called Q. This is a button that will take you into a graphic display of all of your settings. Um, not as complicated as a menu. It allows you to very quickly navigate through different settings using the joystick. Now, if we look at the back of a more entry-level Nikon camera, this is something perhaps like a D3400, um, we find a lot of the same things. There's a joystick that allows you to navigate through menus and 
uh, graphic display of your controls. The Nikon camera has the control wheel up here at the back of the camera when you have a single control wheel, about where your thumb comes to rest. It also has a diopter, but in this case it's not a dial, it's a little slider that goes up and down. Again, that's to uh, make sure that your viewfinder looks focused for your eye. And then we also have an info button with this little lowercase i icon. This is very much like the Q button on Canon in that it will take you into a graphic display of your controls that you can easily navigate around through your joystick or perhaps a touch screen if you have a touch screen. If we look at the back of a more pro level Nikon camera, like a D800 let's say, um, you've got some things that are very common. We have a joystick back here to navigate through things. Here we have two control wheels. You can't see the front control wheel that's always on a Nikon camera, but now Nikon has also at the back, I'm sorry, I take that back. Nikon always has it at the back. It also has a front control wheel in addition to the rear control wheel. We have a diopter up here, the little dial, and we have some direct access buttons to take us very directly to settings like white balance, ISO, and image quality.